What's up guys, Mark here with a, another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to re-thermal any Ice River machine. In this particular video, I will be re-thermaling a Ice River KS3M. Here are the things that you will be needing for this. Uh, microfiber cloth or paper towel will do. A drill with a Phillips bit, or you could use a Phillips screwdriver, but that's gonna take you a really long time. So a drill makes that job super easy. Some alcohol, and we also have some thermal paste over here. This is 8.5 WMK. So that's what you basically want to use is anything above 5 WMK. I'm pretty sure the stock thermal paste on this unit is rated at 3 WMK from factory, which is really bad. It's not really that good at all. And some type of tray to keep track of all your screws. You don't want to lose those. All right, guys, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew all the bottom screws on this panel. So these two, and then from the back, you're going to be unscrewing these two as well. So after you did that, this is what your miner should look like. Two missing screws in the front and two missing in the back. And then you should be able to just lift up and put this to the side. It'll completely come off. Now, what we're going to need to do is unscrew all of these power rail screws. So I'm going to start with this board right here. So I'm going to unscrew these two screws and then we're going to unplug this. So I can just do that right now. And we're also going to be unscrewing all four of these screws on this fan bracket right here. So this one, this one, and these two on the bottom. We're going to want to unscrew all of this and then this will just come off and we'll put that to the side. Okay, so now that you got all those screws unscrewed, you can just take this, it'll come off. I just like to put it to the side, stay right there. Next, you wanna make sure that these two are unscrewed and you just wanna unplug this. You just push down on this, like a little clip, and then it just comes out. Then you just push your hash board out or grab it and pull it. Okay, I was struggling there for a second. I had to use both my hands there. And also I loosened up all of these screws on the rest of the power rails. That can help you as well when removing the hash board if you're having any issues. So then it just slides out just like that. You wanna place it down on a wood surface or soft surface. You don't wanna damage the heat sinks on the back of this hash board or on the front of it. So now what we're gonna be doing is removing all of these screws. And there's one little really important thing about these screws is you don't want to lose this plastic piece that you see on the bottom here. This plastic piece apparently prevents any shortages from happening or shorting. So you want to make sure you don't lose this. Sometimes when you unscrew these screws, it'll be stuck in there. So what I do is I just use some tweezers and then I just remove it with the tweezers. But yeah, one very important thing, do not lose these plastic washers. They're very important. So let's put that over here. Okay, now that I have all these screws removed, you can just remove these heat sinks. Sometimes they don't wanna come off and they're stuck on. So you can get something metal or wood and just pry very gently. And this should come off very easily now. So this is what it looks like. This is the stock thermal gel. It's terrible. It's only three MKW or MWK, whatever it's called. So now what we're gonna wanna do is wash off all this old thermal. So you're gonna be using your alcohol and a microfiber cloth. And the best way to do it is to just put some alcohol on the cloth like so. And then you just wipe it off essentially. It's very hard to do with one hand, but see, it just comes off just like that. So I'll be back when I'm finished doing that. Okay, I finished wiping off all the gel. So another thing that we wanna do while we have this machine taken apart is, we wanna take a look and see if there's any dust in your heat sinks and just brush it off, clean it off while we have the machine apart, because why not? It's already taken apart, awesome. So now that we have both heat sinks clean and a clean hash board, now we can move on to re-thermaling the hashboard. So what I'm using here is nothing fancy. 
I'm just using a little spatula here and I'm gonna be basically essentially scooping up the thermal paste and putting a little bit on each chip. Very tedious, but that's just the way I'm doing it. You know, some people do use these. This is extremely useful and helpful and will speed up the process. So yeah, so if you wanna get one of these, you can. This is a thermal gun. They sell them on Amazon. I'll link it down in the description below. But you can use one of these. I'm not using this because I don't want to use this thermal paste. But yeah, so this is what I'm using. I'll show you guys how to do it. And I finished thermaling the board. So some of these chips I heavily over thermaled. That's okay. As long as you get like this much, I feel like that's a perfect amount. Like this, like a pea-sized drop. That's perfect. Anything more than that, you're just wasting thermal. And thermal is pretty expensive. So you don't want to do that. But basically now we are finished with the thermaling process and we will be reattaching the heat sinks. So this is how you do it. Basically just take the heat sink and line it up with the holes on the hash board. Okay. And the slanted side goes away from the power rail. So it always goes this way to the front of the miner these and basically this is the same process for bait mains and ice rubber they have the exact same heatsink screws exact same hash board design with the two heat plates they might vary in sizes and shapes but essentially it's all the same thing so now we're gonna start putting in all these screws and I recommend you put all the screws into the holes first and then start screwing in just so you get that heat sink perfectly aligned before you start screwing it into the hash board. And there is a specific way that I screw these in. It's uh, similar to putting on a tire or a new wheel, which is screwing it in a star-like formation. You really don't have to, but I just like doing it because I feel like you do get better contact with the board that way. So it's more evenly distributed. Okay, so now that you have all of your screws aligned, I have my drill set to number five. This is a Milwaukee M12 rushed drill, I'm pretty sure. And I have it set to number five for the torque. You don't wanna over tighten these screws because you will break your hash board, which it's not fun. But essentially this is the pattern that you wanna go in. Top left corner, bottom right corner, Bottom left corner. Basically, just do that and finish screwing in all the other screws. Okay, this is what the finished product looks like. Now we're just gonna align it with the third rail and slide it right in. Okay, perfect. And if it doesn't want to slide in, make sure you have these screws loosened up a little bit. And then we're just gonna plug this in and screw in our power rail screws. Okay, now we're gonna start putting it back together. Make sure the fan's back on, screw those in. For the fan case, you're gonna wanna use these longer screws. These are for the fans. Okay, next we're gonna put back our case cover and on the front you want to make sure that your fan cables are going through this little opening right here or whatever opening you have on your miner and for the case you want to use these shorter screws and you are done re-thermaling or upgrading your thermal in your caspa asic miner thank you guys so much for watching if you guys have any questions or comments about this process or anything ASIC related, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below.